In this video, we will see a few tools we can use to fetch objects, how we can navigate between different scenes or simply find nodes within one specific scene already. The first thing I will explain here is the concept of the dollar sign. So in the previous episode, we made something like this. We did fetch a node by using the getNode method from the node that the script is attached to. That is something we did. Since it is a very common action in Godot, there is a shortcut anyone can use to do that, and it is using the dollar sign with the path to the node that you want to get. Here, for example, we use the dollar sign instead of the getNode method and we add the path directly, and there we have the same instruction. Just so you don't feel like you're going crazy, I just changed the color of my dollar sign instruction because I just find that the green by default is very ugly, that's all. Yet, sometime using the path of a node isn't very practical, and it's safer when the situation allows it to use unique names. When a node has a unique name in a scene, it means that the name of the node isn't duplicated. And because just like singletons, there's only one node with that name, it's actually very easy to fetch it. In order to set a node as unique, you right click the node and you access as unique name it. It will add a percent next to that node, which will say this node is unique. From this point, you can, at any moment, decide to use the percent instead of um, dollar sign and go fetch a node like this. So here is a third way to actually show this thing. If you're using the getNode method, you still can use the getNode method with unique nodes by just adding the percent before the label name like this. So here you have the unique label. The main purpose of using unique names is that if you have to reorganize your scene for various reasons, and very often it will be because you want to change the way you have containers and whatever working, um, the path will change. Here, if we do drag and drop the label in the container, the path will change, which means that uh, relative path must be updated. So here our dollar label must actually be equal to dollar container slash label. We must do this in order to make sure that this line keeps working fine. I do think that in the previous video, I did mention that when we have the reference of an object, we can choose to either interact with it directly by changing a property or a value, or we can actually choose to store this reference in order to use it later for various reasons. So we can create a variable, which is going to be label, type label, and we can store this label here. So technically, we don't need to retype this right away because we are already typing the variable. We can then use it somewhere later and say that the text is yet another. However, here the reference we have created is just located within the scope of this function ready, which means that when we get out of ready, this variable label doesn't exist anymore. If we want that reference to be accessible from anywhere within the code, then we must create this property at the level of the class. So here we can have the variable label, and we can't actually initialize it like this. Thankfully, Godot warns us that this is a problem, and it takes a little bit of time to explain exactly why this happens, but if we try to summarize this very quickly, the object can be created outside the context of the scene tree. Because it can be created outside the context of a tree, 
the notion of getting a node from the tree doesn't make sense. The values that we initialize at a class level are initialized very early in the code, which means that some things do not exist yet. In that situation, what we do is that we simply don't initialize the value, we just declare the value and say that it will have a value. And then, in there, instead of declaring the label again, we just assign a value to it. So here, when our object, our node game is getting ready, we go fetch the label because we do know that we are in the tree and this label node probably exists because it is a child of game and we can go fetch it. So Godot created a keyword which is very useful and it is the onready keyword. The onready tag allows us to basically say that the initialization of our variable must be done when the ready function is being called. So this is a quick way to actually have this initialization be done at the right moment without having to add too many lines everywhere in the code. When it comes to initializing things, uh, Godot has another tool, which is the expert tag. The expert tag allows us to initialize nodes or objects within the inspector. So here, let's do two things. We will have a button initialized like this and an integer. So when we create variables with the expert tag, what happens is that if we go in the inspector of the node with the script, we will find those variables in the inspector on the right. So we can say that we want to start with 100 idolines and that the button we want to assign to that variable is this button here. It is a very easy way that many beginners do like to use when they are assigning the variables because they don't really have to work with as much script as uh, other options are requiring. However, uh, in my videos, I choose specifically to not really use this because uh, in most situations, it's not necessary. And it actually creates more problems than it solves problems. The thing is that if you actually look at this situation right now, I'm editing the script and the game node is hidden because I'm watching another node. What happens is that people do copy the code and they do not see what's happening in the game here. So they do not see that those two variables are initialized. And I kid you not, the most common error that people ask me to fix in the comment is people copying the code and not initializing the values in the inspector and then coming saying, I copied the code, but it doesn't work. And yes, it doesn't work because that's not just the code. So yes, I decided to just get rid of that. And even me, uh, I often forget to initialize those values because um, I'm used to leave within the code. So things which are set, initialized outside of it, I tend to forget about those. Just to explain the in and out of expert keyword, basically what the expert keyword says is that when you have a variable with experts, the engine knows that it must save the value along the resource on the disk. So this is what allows us to edit things in the inspector because we can change the values within the resource file, which is the scene file, for example, 
And this is what allows us to save and load data on the disk by saying that we will save this data object. But those properties, their value must be saved on the disk alongside the declaration of the value, if that makes sense. So we will be using this mostly for the save file more than fetching nodes. Now to talk about the last method, which I named that is home, because to be honest, I this came to my mind and I didn't have any better explanation at this point. It is when a parent node is arriving after the child node to announce itself as I'm going to be the valuable you need. Or another situation is a parent node does create a child node and says, okay, I'm your parent. So now you know. Here the script is attached to the game file. So in order to visualize this entire method completely, I'm going to create a script for the label here. So we'll create a script and name this label. Um, we will name this child label. That's almost sounds bad. So, okay. In this child label, we will create a variable, which is going to be control node. So this is going to be the variable game of type control. Now, the variable game is right there. If we okay. want to be able to access the informations from this script here, we, we always can, but the thing is that the editor doesn't know. And having the editor know is always a safer way to code. So here we will just tell the editor that this is not just a label we have, but it is a child label. So from there, the editor knows what are the properties and the methods available in this object. So we can safely go say that label.game is equal to self. This way, well, the parent node says, okay, I'm your daddy, and now you have access to me, and you can access my properties, you can access my methods, etc., etc. Right, that's all we will be talking about in this video because there's already quite a lot, but those are different things and ways to work with objects in the game that you will see in this series. So if you see some weird things and don't really understand what's going on, feel free to come back here because, yeah, I'm, I will try to just avoid over explaining again and again and again because it can be a little bit exhausting sometimes. So I hope you liked this episode, I find it useful, and I will see you in another video.